A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Get away! Video. Today, one from the bridge. <laughs> Maths Olympiad 2009. We need to find all the Nimbus A and B out of the positive integers, including zero, satisfying this um, rooty boy, square root A plus square root of B is equal to square root of 2009. Yeah, it's most definitely a fun one. Got sent to me via email, suggested, and I really like this problem. It's just like the other square root problems. Um, they are just fun to work through. Uh, yeah, try it out for yourself and once you're done, keep watching the video for the solution. By the way, video has been sponsored by the wonderful people over on Brilliant. So if you're not yet familiar with number theory, square roots and the like, why not make sure to check out some of their courses linked down in the description, more information at the end of the video. And now we are going to dive right in. So how would you proceed on a problem like this? Well, what I do normally is if I see square root of A plus square root of B, I try to solve for one of the variables. Thing is, the square root is in the way. So the natural approach to getting rid of square roots is either taking the conjugate multiplied on both sides, so multiplying both sides by square root of a minus square root of b, taking the difference of two squares, or just expanding this by square root of a minus square root of b over the same thing. Or you can just simply square both sides. Now what would happen if we were to just square both sides the way it is? Well, then we are going to get a binomial theorem on this side right here. So we are going to get a plus b plus two times the square root of ab is equal to 2009. Hmm. Okay. Um, now if we want to solve for one of those two, a or b, um, we could bring everything to the other side, but then we would need to get um, square root of a, for example, out if we were to solve for a and bring this to the other side and then try to solve this. I tried it out, it didn't get me anywhere. The same thing with the conjugate. The square root was always kind of preserved. So what I did is I went another approach and just subtracted one of the two square roots. Reason for that is that on the left hand side we can isolate one of the variables in and of itself, then square both sides, for example just getting b, and on the other side everything is just with respect to a. And this worked out splendidly. Let's do this. So what we are going to do is, this right here really doesn't work out, didn't work out, that can fuck off. Now we are going to subtract, for example, square root of a on both sides, it's symmetric, so it really doesn't matter, and all the arguments we do in the next few steps also hold for square root of a or a in general. So we can do everything analogous at the end. So if we were to subtract square root of a on both sides, we are going to get square root of b is equal to square root of 2009 minus square root of a. And now by squaring both sides, on the left hand side we are going to get b isolated. So b is hence equal to, and here we are going to get the binomial theorem, meaning we are going to get 2009. Then we are going to get um, plus a and then we are going to get negative 2 times the square root of and now we are going to get um, 2009 times a. And now we isolated for b which is pretty good and one important condition holds for b namely that it's out of the positive integers with zero. This is good because the positive integers also form a uh, um, not a group, but they are closed under addition, let's put it like this, and also under multiplication. They don't form a group, but they are closed under those operations, multiplication and also addition. Meaning, in order for all of those added together to be an integer, we need each and every part of these to be an integer too, in our cases. This especially holds because this um, is not in equivalence, but this holds especially because a is out of the positive integers too, just like b, meaning this right here is element of the natural numbers with zero. This right here is element of the natural numbers with zero, meaning two times square root of 2009 times a must also be element of the natural numbers with zero. Now, also one more condition is that two times square root of blah 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 must not be greater than 2009 plus a. This is just another condition because if we were to subtract something greater from what we have here then we would get a negative number here, b, okay, which doesn't hold by our um, aforementioned conditions. So now this right here must be 
out of the natural numbers. Now we can go a step further. As mentioned before, they are closed under multiplication, meaning if two times square root of 2009 times a is an integer, then we also must have that, since two is an integer, that square root of 2009 times a is also an integer. Okay, so we got a step further. Now, when is this right here an integer? Well, if this right here is a perfect square, maybe we can get this a bit better. I mean, 2009, perfect square, squaring things, this could get quite complicated because especially A must be of the form 2009 times something in order for this to be a perfect square. Maybe we can factorize 2009. It's not a prime number, last time I checked, <laughs> and see if um, maybe we can extract a few more arguments like those before from our number. So now let's go through the divisibility rules. So it's divisible by one, obviously two not, it's not even number, so also not divisible by four and not by six. What about three? It's only divisible by three if the digit sum is divisible by three. Two plus nine is 11, not divisible by three. It's also not divisible by five because it doesn't end in a zero or five. Now, is it divisible by seven? A number is divisible by seven if we can go through the following algorithm. You can find the link to the algorithm down there in the description. Namely, what we are going to do is we are going to take the last digit off, we are going to double it, so 18, and what we are going to do, the thing that we still have left, the 200, we are going to subtract the 18 from it. 200 minus 18, giving us overall, okay, let's see, 200 minus 18 is overall, um, 182. We can go through the same algorithm once again, it's just like with the digit sum, taking the 2 off, um, because I can see at a glance if it's divisible by 7. Um, so yeah, let's, let's go through the algorithm once again. We are going to take the 18, minus 4 doubling the last is 14. And 14 is obviously divisible by 7, since it's 2 times 7, meaning the original number is also divisible by, by 7, meaning 2009 is actually seven times something. So what is close? Um, 2100 is pretty close, there would be 300, but it's too much, meaning we still have, um, okay, um, we still have 91 left, 91 divided by seven, 70, this is 10, this is going to give us 13. So 300 minus 13 is going to give us overall 287. Okay, 287, is this is a prime number. Let's go through the algorithms once again. So not divisible by two, four, six, also not by five, obviously. Is it divisible by three? No, it's not divisible by three because the original number was not also not divisible by three. Um, now what about seven once again? Okay, is it divisible by seven? Um, yeah, it actually is 280 time, uh, is seven times 40. Seven is left, which is obviously divisible by seven, meaning 287 is a number which is divisible by seven. So we get seven squared times, um, okay, 280 divided by seven is 40, plus one is 41. Hey, we got our prime factorization because 41 is indeed a pretty fine prime number, meaning what we have here is that the square root of, and now we got this factorization, seven squared times 41 times a is also element of natural numbers with zero. Now, we can break the square root up into square root of seven squared, which is just going to give us um, seven. And now we got the same arguments as before. Namely, since this right here is element of natural numbers with zero, and since seven is a natural number with zero, we must have that square root of 41 times a is element of natural numbers with zero. So square root of 41 times a is element of natural numbers with zero. Meaning it's also equivalent to saying this is equal to some number k out of the natural numbers with zero. So meaning square root of 41 times a is equal to some kind of k. And now what we can do is we can just solve for a here. So we can square both sides, giving us um, k squared is equal to 41 times a, and then we can divide by 41 because it's not equal to zero, successor of 40. So we get that a is equal to k squared divided by 41. Okay, k squared divided by 41. Um, since a needs to be a positive integer with zero, we are going to run into another problem. Namely, we need to have that 41 obviously it's going to divide k squared. It's going to divide k squared, but we can actually put this into a better condition, namely that it divides k. If 41 already divides k, then we are going to get that k is equal to 
41 times n. Let's put it like this. And if k is equal to 41 times a, we are going to get that k squared is equal to 41 squared times n squared. And if we were to plug this into here, then we are going to get that a is equal to 41 squared times n squared divided by 41. And now we actually get an integer. Here we need to impose this other restriction um, onto our k, just because if it wouldn't be divisible by 41, then obviously a wouldn't be a positive integer. I think you can see this. Meaning this right here is going to cancel out, meaning a is going to be of the form, finally, 41 times n squared. And as mentioned at the start of the video, since our problem is completely symmetric, since addition commutes, we are also going to get that b is equal to something of the same form. So 41 times we use k already, let's use r squared, where n and r are element of natural numbers with zero. And this is good because we are now basically done. We know what a and b must be after factorizing everything, playing around with the square roots. If we were to plug this into our original problem, we are going to get that the square root of 41 times n squared plus the square root of 41 times r squared must be equal to square root of 2009. But we know what the square root of 2009 is. We have found this out before. This is the square root of 7 squared times 41, meaning square root of 7 squared is going to give us just 7, which is equal to um, 7 times the square root of 41, which is pretty good because if you consider this right hand side, you are going to notice that all of those square roots can be broken up. All the parts in here are actually indeed strictly positive, meaning we can turn this into the square root of 41 times n plus the square root of 41 times r. We can factor out the square root of 41, giving us n plus r. And now we can factor, uh, no, we can divide both sides by the square root of 41 on this new equation that we got here giving us our last final equation, namely for our problem to hold under all the given restrictions, we need to have that n plus r must indeed be equal to 7. And yeah, this is pretty damn easy to figure out now, meaning we can have the following combinations. And since our problem is symmetric, okay, um, I'm going to stop with the calculations halfway through basically, because we can either have that since n and r are both out of natural numbers with zero, we can have them to be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And also the other way around, because n plus r must be equal to zero, and we need to have for n being equal to zero, r being equal to seven, and all the other things. Uh, four, three, two, one, zero. And yeah, we basically got all of our pairs. Problem is symmetric, so I'm going to stop with everything after getting those done. Meaning we are going to have A must be equal to and B must be equal to. Let us start with the first pair. If we plug zero into our A, we are just going to get zero, obviously. And if we plug seven into here, we are going to get seven squared times 41. We know what this is, this is 2009. And obviously this is working out, that's the trivial solution. Now, what about the next pair? Next pair is going to be, if we plug one into here, we are going to get 41. And down here, we are going to get 41 times six squared, which is 36. 41 times 36. Let us figure this out really quick. So 41 times 30, this is going to give us um, 1,230 plus, and six times 41 is 246 meaning this is going to give us 1,476. Now what about the next pair? The next pair is going to be, if we plug two into here, we are going to get four times 41. This is 164, if I'm not mistaken. 164, and the other one is going to be five squared, which is 25 times 41. So 41 times 25. Um, we can expand this by four over four. So this is 41 times 100, which is 4,100 divided by four is going to give us 1,025. Let's go through the last two. So if we plug three into here, we are going to get nine times 41, which is 369. Nice, 369. That's very nice. And also we are going to get, if we plug a four into here, um, this is actually less pair, and we are going to get 16 times 41. 41 times 16. Yeah, this is going to be quick math. So 10 times 41 is 410. And we figured out that six times 41 is the same as 246. 
plus 246, giving us overall the last number being um, 656. Yeah, that's a palindromic number. And those are all the pairs if you also fill those out. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. I really enjoyed this problem. It's a fun one and you have to go through a bit of algebra to get to the end. And if you did enjoy what you have seen today, then you might as well enjoy the contents of today's sponsor pre into a kind of sponsor yet now video here on this channel. Yeah. Really enjoy stuff like this. It's great. And Brilliant provides you with some great competitive mathematics courses over on their website. It's called Contest Maths and they include things like factorials, the algebra that we did today, stochastics, probabilities and also combinatorics and everything you can think of in a highly interactive fashion. Interactive in the sense that you're going to use your own two hands to figure out problems by playing around with graphs at hands. For example, the graph of the square root. Or maybe you are going to take the corners of a triangle, track them around to see how the inner angles are going to turn out. That the sum of the interior angles is indeed 180 degrees. It's one of my most favorite examples. I just love to mention it because I just simply love the animation and this is one I can also use in class at a German school, English website, but still the students understand what I mean in sixth grade. This is amazing and I think this little story really speaks for itself and the quality that Brian provides you as a user. And if this feels like it's something for you, if you want to try out a big portion of Brian for free, then why not make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. As mentioned before, you can try out a lot of stuff, but more importantly, the first time that people to actually make use of the link are going to get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a freaking great deal considering how much content they actually have available on their website already and how much content they are adding on a frequent basis. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And yeah, this concludes today's video. Don't forget to also check out your dad playing with his little wood over on Flemmy's wood, posting a lot of great projects over there in the last time. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao.